Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nali. So in this second video of the kinetic molecular theory, I want to, uh, before I get to the actual uh, postulates of the kinetic molecular theory, I want to first, again, remind you that what people have understood around the 1850s was that heat is a form of energy, and it's a form of energy that is uh, a result of a motion of particles. In other words, particles moving they generate heat, and that heat is what we, you know, we can measure, uh, as you'll see in the next chapter, how we can measure those heat. But that's that's kind of the important point here is that there's particle motion that generates this energy that we call heat. Now, because it's related to the motion of particles, we call it the kinetic energy, okay? And when Clausius proposed a theory to explain how gases behave, he basically took that concept of heat um, and apply it to gases. So he's saying in this case that the gases move, the gas particles move around, and as a result of this motion, they have a kinetic energy associated with them, okay? And the temperature that we measure of a, a gas sample corresponds directly to the kinetic energy of that gas sample, okay? So that's the part that I underlined right here that the temperature of a gas is proportional to the kinetic energy of the gas particles that you have in that sample. Okay, that's an important idea there that is part of the, um, basically the postulates of the kinetic theory. Okay, so now we're actually ready to talk about the kinetic molecular theory and the ideas that are uh, part of that theory. And this five points here listed are what we call the postulates of the kinetic molecular theory, which is basically it's this this word just means the you know in math it's also called axioms, which just means that things that we uh, understand to be true about gases, okay, and everything else comes from here, okay. So th you have to have some basic assumptions about gases, um, and these are all usually fairly easy to uh, show that it's true. And then from here, you then go on to uh, prove other things um, about gases. Okay, so the five different postulates are, the first one is a gas is imagined to be a containing a large number of molecules that are moving around randomly, okay? Uh, these molecules could be monoatomic, like argon, xenon. Uh, they could be polyatomic, like, you know, uh, NO, uh, carbon dioxide, and so on. The distance between the gas molecules in this particular um, picture is that they're really, really uh, far away uh, from one another, okay? So as a result, uh, the size of the particle itself is fairly small in comparison to the distance between the particles. So if you think about it, it's like I have, um, you think about it, it's like outer space to some extent. You have a planet in one side and you have another planet, but between those two planets, there's a huge distance separating them and the s distance between the planets is a lot larger than the size of the planets themselves. So that's the way you kind of want to think about gases as well. There's a lot of empty space um, highlighted here. There's a lot of empty space and the particles are really far away from each other and they're small relative to the distance between them. Uh, the other thing to, to uh, think about is that there's pretty much no intermolecular interactions, okay? Uh, whether it's repulsive interaction or attractive interaction. Uh, understand that these particles, obviously they're, they're atoms or molecules, they're made out of protons and, and electrons, but we, you know, because they're so far away from each other, um, they're basically assumed not to have any kind of uh, interaction with each other, okay? So you can kind of, you know, you can disregard the interaction, so we consider them to be negligible. Uh, the fourth concept, postulate here, is that when the gas molecules, even though they're far away from each other, they sometimes they, they do come close enough to collide with each other, so they will hit each other, um, and they'll hit the walls of the container. So if you have a container, you have a balloon, you have a box that where the gases are in, they're going to hit the walls of those containers. They're also going to hit each other, okay? Uh, however, these collisions are um, imagined to be what we call elastic collision, which is uh, something I'll talk about in the next slide, but basically the idea there is that when they collide, the kinetic energy of the 
uh, molecules are not lost as heat. They're just, you know, they're being transferred. Um, uh, the energy is conserved, so you're not losing any part of it as heat. And then lastly, the this is the part that relates to heat again, okay, which is that the temperature of the gas is proportional to the average kinetic energy of the molecule. So remember I said in the previous slide here that Clausius basically said that that's, you know, one of the um, main concept that underlies this model of the gas. And the reason he proposed this is because, of course, at that point they understood that heat was uh, a form of uh, energy that is a result of motion of particles. So he basically kind of just extended it to gases and said that if gases are moving randomly, they're going to have this energy of motion called kinetic energy. Okay, And as a result of this energy, what we're going to actually observe, be able to observe, it's not the energy, but we're going to be able to observe the temperature, Okay, which is the that corresponds to how much energy the gas molecules have at that particular uh, uh, temperature measure, okay? And all the gas molecules have exactly the same average kinetic energy. So let's talk a little bit about this elastic collision idea. So an elastic collision is, uh, is a definition that comes from physics. You can have either a collision that's elastic or inelastic. The idea of an elastic collision is just it's like a two billiard balls colliding with each other. So in that case, the energy is really not um, they're not really uh, they're conserved in, in the sense that nothing is lost in the surroundings it's basically just the two balls collide they transfer energy to each other but they don't really transfer it to the surroundings so there's no energy lost whereas if you have something like uh, a couple of um, uh, you know clay uh, balls in this case hitting each other when they heat uh, when they collide with each other, usually some of that energy is lost to the surrounding as heat. Uh, so for the gases, we imagine them to be more like hard spheres, so like these, like the billet balls as opposed to clay balls. Okay, so that's what you want to kind of keep in mind as far as what the picture of these gases are supposed to be. So n what we're going to do really in the, in the next um, video, not in this one, but in the next one, is really to kind of talk about this idea of how we can use this model of the kinetic molecular theory, the model that I just talked about, how we can use it to uh, show how um, gases behave and then use them to derive uh, the empirical laws or at least to relate them to empirical laws. But it, first, before we can actually do that, we have to uh, understand what pressure means right so we, we uh, in terms of a uh, microscopic picture so we talk about pressure pressure is you know force per unit area we say that that means that let's say you have your hand in a fist for example and you start pounding on the door or pounding on a table so you're exerting force on the surface of uh, of the table and that force per unit area is what we refer to as the pressure so the idea then is how, you know, based on this picture of a gas particles, they're constantly moving and they look like billiard balls basically, but of course very, very small billiard balls. How uh, is pressure, um, how can we, uh, what, what corresponds to pressure in this picture, okay? That's what we're trying to get to here. And the idea, of course, is that the gas particles are moving around constantly and they're obviously going to have a lot of collisions with the walls of the container. Okay, so if you have a box and you have a gas in there, and you imagine this, you know, millions of these little particles with hearts, uh, as hard spheres and they're just kind of hitting the walls all the time, then every time they hit a wall, they're going to exert a force on that wall, just exactly like if you are pounding on a, on a door, right, with your fists, you're basically exerting force on that door. Uh, surface in this case so the particles are exerting force on the wall surface and that's what pressure is right it's just the force per some surface area now the total pressure that we observe right that we can measure for example with a barometer or a manometer that's just the result of all the particle wall collisions so in other words you have all of these collisions from all the different particles in your sample when you add all of them together, what you get is the total pressure of the gas sample. 